All right, everyone, thank you again for attending Holding Virtual Office Hours. Um, so this workshop today, we're going to talk about a variety of different um, concepts that are associated with our virtual office hours. You know, certainly in an online setting, uh, virtual office hours were a necessity, um, and we are currently still teaching from remote locations. But these are some strategies that hopefully you will be able to take with you. Um, even when we return face to face, when we're on campus, I certainly think social distancing is still going to be a thing. So um, you may continue to hold virtual office hours for some time. So hopefully we can come up with some tips, some strategies, um, and even maybe a possible um, couple of different platforms that you could use for your virtual office hours, maybe even ones you have not considered. So um, I do want to let you know that this is being recorded. So if you have to leave, don't worry. I will send you a link to the recording after the end of the workshop. And if you do have your camera on, you may want to turn it off. This will show up in the recording otherwise. So in the bottom of your screen, right in the middle, you should see a camera icon. Okay. And if you have any questions, please feel free to throw up your hand. Again, that's another icon in the bottom of your screen. You can type in the chat, or as long as we're not talking over each other, feel free to hop on the microphone. So my name is Megan Holt. I'm an Instructional Support Coordinator in the Center for Innovative Teaching and Learning, and you have all of my contact information there. So please feel free, if you have any questions after this, to um, you know, either contact me directly or you can just contact the Center for Innovative Teaching and Learning and we have a whole group of folks who can assist you. So let's talk about connecting with our students for these virtual office hours. Um, you know, they are definitely an important component of any course. And as we continue this transition, into this online kind of remote atmosphere, um, we need to adjust how we think about and plan for you know, implementing our office hours. So I know we probably got used to the face-to-face -face ones, uh, but you know there are some, some advantages to shifting to online, um, and there's certainly different things that you can experiment with. So let's see, I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna put a poll up here in just a moment. There it is. So um, hopefully you see a poll that just popped up in the middle of your screen. So what platform would you like to use for your online office hours? Great, okay, so it looks like the majority of you said Teams, but I do see some for Collaborate in there. Um, and hopefully I can show you a couple of other options as well, just to get you thinking about you know, some things that you can do. <laughs> yes, Chris, all are okay, it's a valid option, certainly. Um, you may find yourself experimenting, trying things out with different classes or different semesters, so um, this, this was just a general inquiry. There was no right or wrong answer. All right, let's move on. So let's talk about some of the benefits of our virtual office hours. Um, students typically want to work harder for faculty when they feel that they are connected to you. So by meeting with your students in a virtual office, you can make personal connections with your students in kind of a one-on-one -on -one setting, even though we're not in this face-to-face -face setting, we can still achieve that kind of connection. 
Um, this will also help your students feel more connected to you and by extension the course. So definitely a big bonus right there. We know that students typically perform better academically when they feel that they are connected to their coursework. Um, in the same kind of vein, if you will, uh, you get to know your students better and they'll get to know you. So um, we're kind of eliminating that disconnected feeling that students have sometimes when they enter a virtual classroom. We're making it personable. Um, so it goes both ways. Right? And then another benefit that we can have on this list, I would say, is that you would be holding virtual um, regular office hours so that students can ask questions and receive answers more efficiently. Certainly, it doesn't eliminate emails, but it can speed up the process if they have a very specific question. Now, I do see a couple more people joining the session. If you missed the first section, no worries. This is being recorded, so after the end of this, um, I will go ahead and I will send out a link to this recording. All right, so let's talk about the types of office hours because there are different aspects to this. So there are a few different methods that you could use. Um, so this includes synchronous drop-in sessions, synchronous scheduled appointments. Um, it could be a combination of the two synchronous options, or you could have an asynchronous option. So many different options here for you to play with, to think about. So. Um, Determining what type of office hours right for you and your students is going to be kind of an important step in how you go about setting this up. Okay, so now we get to go ahead and talk about the synchronous drop-in. So the synchronous drop-in office hours involve you being present um, in the virtual office hour during a specific time during each week. So, um, it kind of is replacing that face-to-face -face, you know, office hours where you would just sit in your office and maybe your students would drop by, same thing. When you do this in a virtual setting, your students can't get into the session unless you're already there. So the benefit to the synchronous drop-in session is that there's a consistent schedule for any student to drop in and get help. Um, and it's similar to you having set those office hours every week, you know, as we said in that face-to-face -face meeting. Now we also have the synchronous scheduled option. So this is kind of a little bit of an alternative to um, the synchronous drop-in. So this is where students have to schedule appointments to meet with you. Um, this can work particularly well right now with you know, everything being remote. People's schedules are just kind of topsy-turvy yours and your students. So sometimes instead of just trying to meet with people during a scheduled period, which you know might cause scheduling conflicts, um, you can just do it kind of on a one-on-one -on -one basis with your students. So you'll pick a time on your, on your schedule or on your calendar um, and block it out just for that particular student. Um, also, if you have no appointment scheduled, uh, the nice part about it is, we'll be honest, you, you don't need to be sitting in there just waiting to see if somebody drops by. So um, it, potentially this one could save you a lot of time. All right, and then we have the synchronous combination, which maybe is the most realistic of the bunch. So you could dedicate a certain block of office hours for appointments, um, but then also set aside maybe another block of time you know, just for drop-ins. So um, it could be 50-50, like maybe you'll only have um, drop-in appointments one day a week, and then everything else, if people can't make it during that period, uh, they would need to contact you to schedule an, a meeting. Okay. So then let's talk about asynchronous. So this is a good supplemental option to a synchronous session. So this option offers the instructor probably the most flexibility while allowing the students you know, some of that freedom to ask you questions as they um, arise outside of a specific time frame. So asynchronous office hours can be delivered through your online course, or you can use another platform, which again goes back to that poll that I was asking about. I was just curious to see if we had any you know, personal preferences here. 
Um, so outside of Blackboard, you could definitely create a channel or a team um, in Microsoft Teams. I saw a lot of you were interested in that. Um, and you could have students post questions there. Uh, you could even take it a step further. And you could let your students um, know that you'll be checking the asynchronous office hours forums. So, um, you know, you could have a designated time where you'll just go in to see if any questions have been posted. Um, so it kind of becomes part of your routine. Your students can go in there anytime they want to post questions, but there's going to be a specific block of time where you'll go in um, to respond to any questions that they may have posted. Okay. So let's talk about some tips for the office hours. Um, let's, let's actually open this up to the chat. It feels pretty quiet in here. So um, you can go ahead, you can type in the chat pod, but my question for you is, how can you make yourself seem approachable and willing to help? So I'll let you type away. What's the key to seeming approachable? How do you how do you draw your students in? All right, thank you. I see a couple of responses here. So Chris, you're saying to actively reach out to them and invite a response. Sure, call on people. Sometimes students have really great questions, uh, but you know they're they're reluctant to to raise their hand or to seek help. Sure. As Vieta says, I think one to one video chats make them more comfortable and open. Certainly. So sometimes office hours really do need to be one on one. Um, versus group office hours, absolutely. And Mary says, I like weekly announcements to the entire course and let them know that I'm available and happy to help. Great. Reminders are key and crucial. Yes, uh, you can't just tell your students once. We, we know that we definitely need to repeat, you know, important things like office hours are held on such and such dates. Great. I like all of these ideas. All right. So one of the things that you may want to think about when you're talking to your students. Great, John, I love this. You have multiple modes of communication with your students. Um, he says he's available over Teams, email, and office hours. Fantastic. So, um, sorry, but to go back to that, um, one of the things you may want to think about, you know, with your communication with your students is your tone. Um, and that also comes through not just in, you know, announcements, but it can come through with your syllabus, um, assignment prompts. So you always want to encourage your students. Um, try to use as much positive language, reinforce that idea over and over again. I loved that idea about, you know, reminder announcements. Um, but again, all of these things are are impacting your students and they're thinking about if they want to reach out to you for extra assistance or for clarification. Um, you also do want to think about, are you trying to communicate with your students as a whole or one on one? So going back to this again, are you welcoming? Are you encouraging? Do you seem detached? Um, do you present yourself as eager to help your students with questions? Um, or do you give the impression to students that it's an inconvenience? So, you know, hopefully we, we never want to seem that way. Um, but again, some things can get muffled or lost when we're trying to communicate with our students, you know, in an online setting. Daryl says that saying that you really like speaking with students and hearing what's going on, um, what's going well and what's difficult, absolutely. So just keep telling them, I want to hear from you. I'm excited to hear from you. Um, and finally, the last part that I do want to talk about is um, 
you know, think about what kind of relationship you want to have with your students and how can you design your communications to establish connections that motivate students to seek out your office hours. So um, think about all the different ways that you communicate in your course. So you can create some sort of a consistent tone um, through all these forms of communication. So welcome videos, announcements, discussion boards, emails, um, assignment prompts, even technology instructions. You know, if you think it could be a potentially confusing topic, like reiterate, hey, do you have questions on how to do this? Let me know. I know that kind of sounds common sense, but I feel like we need to be extra repetitious right now in an online setting. All right, so now we can move on here and we can go to the tips for office hours. So one thing to remember is that students may not return to uh, what we consider module zero or your welcome message in your Blackboard course um, later in the semester. So if you had important information that you posted early on, um, one tip that we can honestly tell you is just to make sure that you post these instructions um, in other areas of your course in more than just that intro module. Right. You may also tell your students about office hours early in the semester, but again, it doesn't mean that they're going to remember or they might not remember how to access them. So um, usually students don't really retain that information uh, unless they need it. So uh, I know that maybe sounds mm, less than encouraging, but truthfully, they, they just haven't committed that to memory. So. Um, make it easy for them to find that information. So when they decide they do need to come talk to you, um, that they can just kind of find it, you know, at their fingertips. And of course, that's why posting clear instructions in multiple places is important for ensuring that students know how to take advantage of your virtual office hours. All right. So tips for office hours. Um, when you send out a reminder, you know, make sure that you reiterate to students that, that you are available, explain again how they should connect with you. Um, if you have a deadline for scheduling office hour appointments, you know, you should probably remind them of that as well. So um, realistically, you shouldn't have to be checking your email, you know, before you go to bed or at midnight or something like that. So it's reasonable to tell them that they need to schedule it a certain amount of time in advance or that you are only going to check for um, new appointments between such and such hours. So, uh, you know, this just helps keep a healthy work and life balance for you and for your students. Um, reiterate that, you know, your office hour invitations are um, available throughout the semester. So, you know, how do they find these again? Um, do they need to go back to module zero? Can we put this in module three? Um, can you do an announcement? Can you send out an email? So um, usually if you just repeat these things, um, you don't have to go and search for them. And lastly, let's remember that students may not pay close attention to that initial mention of your office hours, but repeating them throughout the semester, even targeting invitations to struggling students will ensure that students know when your office hours are and how they can attend when they actually need the help. All right, now we get to talk about broadening our scope here. So are there any students who seem very interested in your course subject? Uh, you know, this is something that you need to kind of think about as you're hosting these office hours. So you can encourage those students to attend your virtual office hours to discuss whether they should major or minor in your discipline. Um, you know, again, you don't just have to be kind of this backseat presence for your office hours. You can really just reach out to people. Um, I think it helps students feel connected and they actually, if they are already interested in your course, they're really going to appreciate that you've noticed. So, are there students um, who are, are majors or minors in the discipline already? And you might want to encourage them to drop into your office hours to discuss ideas for careers in the field of study or to provide undergraduate or graduate research opportunities. Again, this is actually using your office hours to make those connections. 
And something else that we've discussed as a group in the CIDL department is you could also have regular virtual cafe sessions to encourage students to attend your office hours. So you could lead a discussion on recent or maybe even notable discoveries in your field. Um, and so then you can get students excited about what they're learning. So lots of different ideas there. Um, and you would be surprised how well it goes over. Um, like we said, if you do these virtual cafe sessions, that really just shows up with our coffee beverage. You know, it, it does kind of emulate that face-to-face -face feeling. So another tip that we have for encouraging students to attend office hours is to require attendance. So I do know that while it may be counterproductive to require students to attend office hours every week, um, you may want to consider requiring students to attend your office hours at least once early in the semester. So that's a good place for you to actually connect with your students, to meet them, to talk to them. Um, my background is in English, so I used to have a requirement that my students would have to come to at least one office hours appointment uh, to conference about you know, one of their essays, something like that. You can require it uh, without you know, dictating what day and time they have to show up. Uh, students also might be more likely to attend office hours when they need help um, if they've already been to your office hours. So, um, you know, if you if you require it early on once, you know, in the beginning of the semester, later on, if they're having trouble or if they're just a little bit confused, they're going to be more receptive to this idea of coming to virtual office hours because they've already done it. And students will be less intimidated um, if they've touched base with you before. So have students make a quick you know, five to 10 minute appointment or drop in during your office hours in the first few weeks of class. Um, but anything like this, you know, just to get you kind of familiar with your students, you know, building that, that connection, all of these things are going to help you. And the required attendance honestly can help break the ice with students. And, you know, it'll make them more likely to attend future office hours, not just for your course, but for other courses too. So uh, it does have a larger impact than just your class. Okay, so I know we threw that poll up there earlier and we do have various office hours um, platforms that you can use at NIU. So we're gonna go through some of these today and I, I actually included some that I thought maybe you hadn't considered just to, to get your mind you know, whirling about different options that you have available. Um, so now we've talked about, you know, tips for how to make the most of your virtual office hours. So now we can take a look at, you know, these platforms. We know that we have Zoom, Microsoft Teams, Blackboard Collaborate, um, but we have some other ones out there. Um, and in, in addition to the recommendations that we have, um, you know, feel free to use any platform that you and your students are comfortable with. There are some uh, free platforms out there. So you know, I think there's like Google Meets. I, I don't know if I personally want to use that one, but um, you know, again, be creative. What are your students like? What do you like? Uh, you're not obligated to choose just from this list, but I, I did want to show you some things that you have at your fingertips because you're an NIU faculty member. So one of the options here that we have is the synchronous Blackboard Collaborate. And of course, this is housed within uh, your, your own Blackboard course. Okay. Blackboard Collaborate does provide you with um, a virtual office hours platform that students will be able to find you know, directly from your course. And that's whether you're using Blackboard Original or Blackboard Ultra, they both have this option. So you can create a separate virtual office session and set it to open on a reoccurring basis during your office hours, or you can just hold office hours within your default course room. Um, at which point you would just leave it open. Um, you don't have to put date and time parameters on it, but your students could come in, you know, and visit you based on the schedule that you've already established elsewhere, you know, in the course. If you use Blackboard Collaborate for your virtual office, you will want to familiarize with uh, the breakout room feature. So, uh, Breakout rooms are particularly nice if you have open office hours and your students are trickling in. All of a sudden, you might have you know, 
three or four people in your virtual office hours with you. But if you want to talk about something specific, say like their grades, um, private matters like that, then you can go into breakout sessions, you know, with your students. Another option that we have for virtual office hours is using Microsoft Teams. And I know a lot of you expressed interest in that. So um, it is also available as a tool within Blackboard. But you can create Teams meetings by visiting uh, the content market and clicking on the Microsoft Teams tool. So uh, hopefully you can kind of see that right there. And then you would sign into your Microsoft account using your NIU email address and password. And that's how you would create a new meeting. Um, or you could just you know, download Microsoft Teams directly to your desktop. That's also an option. You can just use a little icon. I know that's what I personally do. So um, once you've created your new meeting and you've saved it, you'll be able to see the meeting link at the top of your course content area um, in your course calendar for um, UltraView courses and uh, in Original View courses, your link actually um, will be in the course calendar, but it will um, appear in the first content area in your course menu. Now, one thing to note is that you cannot set up reoccurring appointments uh, using Teams for Blackboard, but you could set up reoccurring meetings in your Outlook calendar um, or by editing the meeting details. So that, for me, is why I kind of like to download Microsoft Teams directly to my um, computer and just use the desktop icon. It, it helps me to, to set up those reoccurring sessions. Uh, something interesting to note about Microsoft Teams is if you're planning on using this for office hours, if you want to have screen sharing privileges with your students, you know, like if you want to see what they're working on, it's helpful if you tell them in advance to download Microsoft Teams so that they have those sharing privileges. So I did just want to throw that out there as a quick tip before I forgot. And so again, going back to this Microsoft Teams, once you or your student clicks on the meeting link within the course, you will then be prompted to join the meeting using a variety of options, including um, downloading the app to your desktop, using the browser, or opening the Teams app if you already have it installed. So I like the Teams app, but again, any of these options will, will work. And all right, as you connect to those virtual office hours on Teams, um, you will be able to set up your microphone and video, or you can connect it to audio using your phone. Uh, probably that's the least desirable option, but um, all of that can be done. And then once your settings are as you want them, you would click join now to enter the Teams meeting. Chris, are all of these set up for mobile devices? Yes, they, they would be um, accessible for mobile devices. So um, yeah, it'll, they're pretty good. So all of these are, are pretty standard. We know that a lot of our students right now are using tablets and things of that nature, so yes. And again, if you're, um, if you're posting this in your Blackboard course, you know, a lot of your students are actually using uh, the Blackboard uh, mobile app. So um, again, they'll still be able to access that directly from their course. Okay, you can also create a team for your class in Microsoft Teams. So um, there are several options for types of teams that you could create, including a class option. Um, once you create your team, you can add your students to the team. You can give students access to the channel by sharing a link to the team. Um, so you can start team meeting within the channel by clicking the video camera icon below the conversation area of the channel. So I know you can kind of see that a little bit on the screen. Um, but there are also tabs at the top of the channel to allow you to organize your team channel um, and search for information more, more easily. Uh, you can also upload your class material contribute to a class notebook, and you can even hand out assignments in your team. So those are all things that you can do. Now this would kind of assume um, if you're using these features that you're using your office hours for kind of large groups, 
uh, collaborative, maybe not so much of a one-on-one -on -one setting. And here's another one for you, um, which I didn't know if any of you were aware of, so I wanted to throw this out here. You could do a synchronous Adobe Connect. And Adobe Connect is another option just for holding virtual office hours. Uh, to use this platform, you would need to create your meeting within Adobe Connect, um, which you will log in through NIU using your NIU login credentials. I will double check on this. Um, for a while there, people were having trouble um, accessing Adobe. So um, if this is something that interests you, let me know. I can make sure um, that that's all been resolved. But um, to set up your meeting details um, and invite participants to join your meeting, you can update the start times for your meeting, uh, for new office hours, or you can create a new meeting for each office hour instance. So lots of different options there. I just wanted to throw it out there as you know, one more platform. If you're unsatisfied with some of the other ones that you know, I think we all know about, here's another kind of new and unusual one for you to consider. Okay. So another tool that you could use for synchronous office hours is the whiteboard tool in Office 365. So um, I don't know how many people are aware of this. So again, I'm just trying to broaden your scope on options. I, I like having more choices than not enough. So uh, this tool is useful for virtual office hours that don't require audio. So you and your student can communicate via the whiteboard collaboratively. So you might be thinking, no, I like to talk to them. I like to hear their voice. But again, some students are very reluctant to turn on their microphone. So um, you know, this might be another way to engage with your students. And you know, this is a good option for students who want to meet synchronously um, but don't have that audio video capability. You'd be surprised how many people that is right now. Um, we're catching our students, you know, in between their work and family commitments. So um, it is something just to put in the back of your mind. And let's see. You would want to create a new whiteboard for each student appointment so that the student's privacy is maintained. Um, so this is really more on those one-on-one -on -one meetings. But um, if you want to save the whiteboard content, you can also do that. I know I'm speeding up here a little bit. I see we've got just a little over 20 minutes left, so I do want to make sure that we get through everything. So as far as asynchronous goes, um, you know, if you are already doing synchronous course sessions, you might want to do asynchronous um, office hours because, again, we're still trying to balance this work and life, you know, schedule. So um, this is another way to think about it. So. Um, a basic way to hold synchronous or asynchronous office hours is through email. So you can you know, just keep it basic, keep it simple. You can hold your office hours synchronously by telling students um, when you'll be in your email um, and allowing them to communicate with you via email in real time. So um, you might be thinking, why would I do that? Why, why wouldn't I just have you know, like a Zoom or a Teams session? Well, a lot of our students kind of like the concept of text messaging. This is taking it a, a step further, okay? Um, now they can chat with you back and forth um, in real time, but you're just doing it through an email exchange. So you can use email for asynchronous office hours as well. Um, just let your students know, you know how often you're gonna be there. Um, you know, are there certain hours that this happens, days of the week, you know, just again, um, you probably don't want to be doing this um, all hours of the night, weekends, holidays. So establish those parameters. Okay. And next, we have um, the asynchronous Blackboard messages. Um, so this is the same way that you could use um, Outlook email for your virtual office hours, but you could use Blackboard messages. So. Keep in mind that your messages can only be sent from an open course. So if your course is hidden or closed, um, then it's not going to work for you. So, um, for example, you know, if you send a welcome message to students before the semester begins, but the course is hidden, that's not going to work. So, you know, that's the only reason I bring that up. Otherwise, I think most of us have you know, courses that are open. But you can send your message a student by clicking on the envelope in the course and selecting the purple plus sign. Um, and again, this is for the um, ultra version of the course. And, but this is how you would send a new message. 
And you can search for an individual student um, or you can send, you know, to groups. You can do more than one person. So sometimes you may even want to host office hours if they, your students are divided into group work. So this is a great option to do that where you can just message, you know, those particular students. You can type your message in the box and, you know, you can select your options. You might not want your students to reply to that message. So, um, you can, you know, deselect that, but um, you can also send your message through Blackboard. There's also an option to send it as an email message. So that's really nice. You know, again, do I, I always think that my students are checking my messages in Blackboard. No, um, but sending it to their email, that's more likely that they'll, that they'll check that. So, you know, you're kind of doing double duty there. And let's see. So on this one, if you click on a course, you will open the course and go to the messages section of that course. And then if you click on the plus sign, you can create a message directly from this area of the Blackboard uh, based navigation. And if you don't see a plus sign, then that course is unavailable or closed and so you cannot send a message. So that's, you know, again, just going back to that, making sure your course is open. Um, this is just due diligence to make sure that when you send out a message that your intended recipients can actually see it. So. Um, I hate when you do all this work and then you realize that it didn't pay off. So we're trying to avoid any of those situations. And again, if you click on that plus sign, you will see the same new message pop up um, that you would see when you're creating a new message from within the course. So, you know, just another way to do it. But um, You know, Blackboard does have additional tools that you can use for your asynchronous virtual office hours. Um, and so one of them uh, that we actually recommend is doing a discussion board. So again, as we all know, if you're using a discussion board, this is more for those intended uh, group dynamics. So you might want to preface that um, if you're doing, you know, a discussion board for open office hours, that if they have specific concerns about their coursework or their grade that they reach out to privately via email or something like that. Um, but you can create this kind of class Q&A forum where students can post questions asynchronously. Um, and then, you know, the nice part about this is, sure, you'll be checking in and responding, but sometimes you, the students will actually be responding to their peers as well if they already know the answer. So, um, you know, again, it's kind of encouraging more connections within the course, you know, your students are getting to know each other, um, and you're also encouraging kind of some of that independence where they don't rely on you for an answer. In the UltraView courses, the discussion board can be accessed from the discussion section of the course, which would you, know, you can get to um, just by clicking on that little speech bubble at the top right corner of the class. I think you can see that little box up there. You also have the option of adding the discussion to the course content area. So, um, you know, again, just how visible do you want to make it to your students? We always try to, to make this, you know, first and foremost so that our students can see it. You know, um, they don't have to scroll to find it. Again, we're just trying to make everything as accessible to our students as possible. Right. And then when you are creating your discussion board, you will want to consider the settings carefully. So um, use a, a Q&A discussion board. Um, make sure it's ungraded. You know, again, we don't want to set it up accidentally uh, as an assignment or something like that. Uh, and you wouldn't want to have settings on like uh, making your students post first before they can see their classmates posts. Again, it's this idea that it's um, an open forum. It's not graded. It's not a class activity. It's not, you know, something that they'll see on their syllabus. Um, but you're just taking a basic Blackboard function that's easy for them to find um, and turning it into your into your asynchronous office hours. Okay. So you know, we're getting down to about 15 minutes here. So as far as scheduling goes, um, whether you want to use Teams, Collaborate, or any other synchronous platform for your office hours, you um, have a couple of options for managing your office hour appointments um, for your own personal schedule. So um, one of those options is you can have students use the scheduling assistant in the Outlook calendar. And this will work you know, if you're um, keeping your schedule updated in Outlook. If you're not, maybe it's not ideal. 
but um, I know I personally rely heavily on this. So, um, you know, otherwise you can have students that create a calendar event and invite you to attend, or you can determine whether to accept or propose a new time. So, um, again, you know, it goes both ways. You can create the appointment or your students can create the appointment, but um, it gives you this level of flexibility where, you know, if you see a scheduling conflict, you know, you're actually going to go to a webinar, uh, you can propose a different time. So for um, Teams meetings, though, you want to make sure that you toggle the Teams meeting option next to the location area of the event when creating it. Um, if you do so and you don't change the details of the meeting, you and your student will be able to click the link from within your calendar uh, just to launch the Teams meeting. So instead of the student having to call you from within Teams. So, you know, that's just another useful tip to, to put out there. And this method also ensures that your meeting is private and it will not be interrupted by another student entering the meeting. So again, very crucial for you know, some of those more sensitive topics if you're just trying to do one-on-one -on -one meetings. And um, if you do use the scheduling assistant, this is what it'll look like. So hopefully you can see that pretty well. Um, your student would need to add you as a required attendee or vice versa, you know, if you're the one creating the, the event, um, then you would make sure to add your student as a required attendee. And any unavailable times for each attendee will be blocked off, so you can choose a time that works for both of you, which is really nice. So, again, this only works really if um, both parties are using, you know, the calendar option. Um, I know a lot of faculty members do. Now our students might not. So um, just be prepared that if you schedule something, your student might say, oh, I have to work that day or something like that. All right. So another scheduling option um, that takes a little bit more work um, up front, but it might be easier for students, is uh, to use bookings in Office 365. So um, with this application, you can actually create your bookings. Um, so like in this case, I think if you see it up here on the screen, um, I've named it virtual office hours and added the logo image. You would choose the setting that you want to apply to your booking page. So that includes, you know, access control, color theme, um, and the scheduling policy. And then um, with the scheduling policy, you can choose the time increments. So let's see, I think on mine, I've set it for uh, 15 minutes, and you can stipulate a minimum lead time for booking appointments. For example, like 24 hours is a good lead time, as well as a maximum lead time. In this case, I've set it for 14 days ahead of time. You know, anything, anything, you know, earlier than 14 days, who, who knows what's going to happen in life. So. Um, and again, you can alter that as need be, you know, based on your, your own personal feelings about your schedule. So, um, and you can also choose to um, receive email notifications, which is something that I would recommend as well. All righty. And um, you're also going to set up your availability. So these are your regular office hours. Um, again, this is, you know, kind of the idea that you're using office hours um, is kind of like a, a reoccurring appointment. So which reoccurring days and times of the week are you opening up your office hour, um, you know, approximate, you know, times for these appointments, you're going to add those there. Um, then you want to make sure you factor in things like whether you will have any open office hours so that you don't add these times to your bookings availability, that kind of a thing. So. Again, it's a little bit of front loading. This might be too much work, but it might be one of those things like if you if you do it ahead of time, um, it's all downhill from there. It, it's a lot of prep work, um, but then it's just kind of smooth sailing. And you know, the nice thing about bookings is that you can connect your Outlook calendar to the bookings calendar, and it won't let students book office hours appointments when you have events during that time. So like including other student appointments. Um, let's see, what else can I tell you about this one? Oh, okay. Um, oops, let me go back. So uh, from the services tabs, you want to um, enter the services that you'll be offering. So, you know, in this example, I, I just have one 
Um, it just says virtual office hours, appointment for 15 minutes. You can add multiple services. For example, if you want to have a different time increments for students to choose from, you know, if it's just a quick question, they're only going to need a few minutes. But, uh, you know, if they want to conference, you know, about how to tackle their next assignment, they might need 30 minutes. Um, or even up to an hour for more involved assistance. So, um, you know, you might want to give them that option or you might not, I don't know. Um, again, personal preference here. There is a default service added. Um, and I believe it's called initial consultation, but you can delete that once you've added at least one of your own services. So, you know, if you see that pop up, please don't panic, but it's normal, you can delete it. And once you save and publish your bookings, you can share the link with your students on Blackboard. Um, students will be able to go to the bookings page and book an office hours appointment with you if you want to give students the option for how they'd like to meet. So in other words, you know, Teams or Collaborate, you know, Zoom, whatever, whatever's on your um, agenda that you've offered to your students, make sure that you stipulate um, in your services option by providing options for each of those. So. I know so many options, but um, just kind of, you know, designed to give you some flexibility with your scheduling here. Um, after you publish your bookings page, you can preview what your students will see. So that's a, a definite benefit, right? We, we want to be able to provide, you know, advice to your students um, and just know what it looks like from their end. Um, students will see the dates that you're available in the calendar when they click on an available day and they'll see an appointment times on the right side of the screen so that they can choose when they want to schedule their appointment. So it is really handy. You know, one of the advantages of doing this is that um, when you set these things up, you know, you set up the appointment so it doesn't conflict with other courses you're teaching, other commitments. Um, so yes, it's a lot of front loading, but ultimately um, it, it will help you just stay organized. And you will receive an email notification once the student has booked an appointment. So it will be added to your Outlook calendar automatically. So you don't even have to do anything. It just takes care of it for you. All right, so I know I've stressed that you can use any platform that you like. Um, so again, you know, feel free to, to get creative. Think of things that we haven't even discussed today. Um, ask your students for their recommendations. What did they like to use? Right? Um, again, if they feel comfortable, navigating a certain platform, that's just one more step towards drawing them into your virtual office hours. So, um, you know, feel free to talk back and forth with them. You, you know, you might find some consistency in what your students like. Um, what else can I tell you about it? Um, I think I talked about Google Meet, you can do Zoom, um, or if you wanna find another tool for scheduling appointments, there's, um, Candidly, Doodle, um, there's some other ones um, directly built into Office 365. I think it's called Find Time. Um, so lots and lots of different options that you can utilize. And you'll also just want to remember that you need to provide a secure environment in which students uh, are invited to meet so that their privacy is protected and FERPA regulations are not violated. So. Um, you may need to take extra steps with privacy settings to secure your virtual office. So, yeah, I don't mean to be a downer, but I, I still feel like that's an important aspect to include. Okay. Whew, I think I have made it with just about five minutes left to spare. So, um, yes, questions. Chris, I, I see your hand up there. Um, the... I'm not quite sure how to articulate this as a single question. It might be more than one, but can you say a little bit about the pros and cons of providing uh, channels that that use, say, my my cell phone? You know, having um, text messaging with students that requires me to give them my uh, my cell phone number, uh, and in general about using sort of social, you know, if you will, sort of public social media channels rather than controlled channels like uh, uh, Blackboard or Teams? Okay, that's an interesting question. Now, truthfully, I have never given out my cell phone uh, number to students, and um, the fact that you do so it is just very heartening to hear. I, I think it just speaks to how... Oh, no, I didn't say I did it. I'm, I'm asking whether it's a good idea. I'm, I'm really raising the question oh. to ask whether it's a good idea or a bad idea to ever do it. 
Um, I would not now, um, you know, if you're really connected um, with your phone, you carry it with you always and you, you know, in the back of your mind, you're thinking, well, it would be really nice, like if they could get a hold of me. Um, there are some different mobile apps that will actually block your cell phone number. So it's kind of protected. Um, I'm trying to think what's the name of this one. Um, it's like, a, hmm, I have to think. I have a, it's like a, a Google Voice. So um, that's something that you could use. Um, and it lets you pick kind of like a, a faux phone number. So students can call you. Um, it'll come up on your phone. Uh, but they, again, they don't see your, uh, your real personal phone number. So that's actually, you know, kind of an option that you could use. Um, and you would, of course, then see that this is somebody who contacted you through Google Voice. Um, likely that would just be your students. So you have your choice whether or not you want to respond. So, uh, you know, that is kind of an option. But um, again, I, I think it's all about finding that work-life balance for you. So I don't know if you want to go that route or not. Um, I, I think some of these other options might protect your time a little bit more. Um, having established hours of when you can respond to students will just help you, you know, stay balanced in life and you won't worry about missing, you know, when a random appointment. So um, does that kind of answer your question? Yes, thanks. Okay. Do we have any other questions? You can hop on the mic or you can type in the chat. I know we've got about three minutes left. I'm going to go ahead and I'll stop the recording now.